Look, Entei is tired of the disrespect of being rarely used. Big Fella's got some pretty solid stats with big HP, attack, and speed, and it also benefits from its ability Inner Focus, which stops it from being flinched, but also makes it immune to Intimidate. It's also able to abuse the very exclusive move Sacred Fire, which is a stab 100 power fire move that has a 50% chance to burn the target, which is nuts. We slap a choice band on the guy and nothing wants to switch into this. It can also take advantage of extreme speed paired with Terra Normal for huge priority damage, and even coverage in options like Stone Edge or Crunch. In my opinion, Entei is slept on, so we're gonna go ahead and give some people the business. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I announce that Entei has beat the mid allegations. This thing always provides more value than you'd expect, and nothing wants to switch into a choice banded sacred fire or even extreme speed. Our fire doggo friend just does not get enough love, and luckily that is what I am here for. If you're into that kind of thing, you should hit that subscribe button. I'm working on 400k subs, and we're kind of getting there, so go ahead and help out. Now before we get into the match, I want to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. So look, Surfshark is the best VPN out. In, in a nutshell, it's a technology that encrypts your data and masks your IP address when you use the internet. Aside from the obvious security and privacy benefits, it has some other really cool things that it can do. First, you can unlock censored content. I was actually just in a trip to Japan, and I was able to turn on my Surfshark to set my location to the US to access Netflix shows from back home, or even vice versa when I got back. Another huge one is price discrimination. When online shopping for things like flights or hotels, companies will often show you higher prices they think you'll pay based off of data that they have on you. But when you pop on the Surfshark, this is able to mask any data and gives you guaranteed best prices. The best part in my opinion about Surfshark is the fact that one single subscription allows you to use unlimited devices. If for some reason you have like 40 laptops and 6 cell phones, you're still good. Surfshark also has a product called Alternative ID, which is a tool that generates a brand new identity and email for you to use to avoid you know, providing personal information to one-time use websites that like you don't want to get bombarded by emails from for the rest of your life. Surfshark is already insanely good value, but right now you can go to surfshark.com slash Hayden or click the link in the description to get an extra four months of Surfshark. Definitely check it out. And let's go ahead and get back to the battle. All right, so first things first. Now my opponent's team comp, I noticed from the team preview, they're working with a nice little defensive kind of team setup. They've got a double regenerator core in both the Hydrapple and the Galarian Slowking, along with a Corviknight. So there's some thick fellas around that I'm gonna have to work with. And as I lead off with the fortress, I'm here to just set up my stealth rock. There's gonna be quite a bit of pivoting if I can kind of limit some, uh, or at least punish some switching. That's gonna be nice. Now they let off with the Hydrapple. Probably not excited to see the fortress here, so they actually end up switching. They're gonna bring in Reggie Ilecki, and this guy is just jumping for joy. And actually, it's kind of annoying. I figured they'd probably just go for a rapid spin here, but actually, it's just gonna thunderbolt, and that is gonna hurt. It is gonna break my sturdy on fortress. Not only that, but also now fortress is not really gonna function as a defensive switching anymore. And I surely should have just hard swapped into the Excadrill. Part of me thought that maybe they would go for something like a Volt Switch, trying to grab uh, a little bit of matchup initi initiative, and then my Volt Switch would go after, allowing me a matchup. But instead, now I can go into the Mole. And one good thing we know for sure about Reggie Lucky, while this thing is fast and ex extremely scary, there's one thing he cannot do, and that is touch a ground type, unless they go for a Terra. And I'm like, surely they're not going to Terra this early. But what do they do? They Terra this early. They're going to go for that ground Terra, which is kind of annoying now. I do have an air balloon still intact, so they can't go for that Terra Blast. But it is going to allow them to go ahead and spin in a rapid fashion, which does not only get rid of my rocks, but also uh, boost this thing's speed up even further. So if you thought you were going to outspeed this Regieleki, you're not going to. It's buddy's quick as hell. So I went for the Sword Stance, thinking they probably don't want to commit to Terra this early, thinking maybe I can grab uh, a nice little, little early sweep or some type of setup with Excadrill. Problem then becomes now, I obviously got my balloon popped by that rapid spin, so now I'm vulnerable to a ground terror blast. And I, if I want to get any value out of Excadrill or basically stop this Regilecki in its tracks here, I have to go ahead and commit my own terror. So I'm going to go for the Terra Dragon that's going to allow me to at least guarantee that I can live a terror blast. And then I should be able to finish this thing off with an earthquake in return, especially after a sword dance. Problem is, I was really hoping that I was going to be able to potentially get a rapid spin of my own, allowing Exodrill to not only have a Swords Dance, but then just be faster than everything else. And then Drillbert goes Bird. So I take the uh, Terra Blast nicely, I can then fire off that Earthquake, and that's going to take care of Reggie Lucky. So, at the cost of going for my own Terra, I at least take, old, take out their Reggie Lucky, which is a huge threat, but also get rid of their Terra. So there's going to be no surprise Terras in the back, and uh, unfortunately this does allow them a easy revenge switch 
into freaking low kicks, who obviously just destroys everything with the first impression. And as I realized nothing really wants to take it, I decide I still have some value out of the Excadrill. I'm gonna go ahead and save that thing for later. And I'm gonna switch into the Fortress. This freaking orb is basically useless at this point. I do die to a first impression. But at least that is going to help out. But it takes one for the team because now I have revenge switching of my own. And it's time to bring in the Entei. So one thing I notice about Entei in this matchup, nothing really wants to switch into it. And considering they don't have Stealth Rock up on my side, I'm pretty free to bring in Entei. And as long as I get this thing in without having to hard switch into moves, I'm actually in a really good spot to do damage to anything because they kind of have their back against the wall, at least there with the low kicks. They're forced to leave that thing in because nothing switches into a Sacred Fire. Now, Basculation is the type of thick fish that could switch into it, but you just run the risk of getting that 50% burn chance, which basically just really cripples the thing. So I decided to save the Entei for later. I realize I have really good value in that thing, so I want to keep it healthy. And I'm actually just going to switch right into Excadrill basically as a Death Potter switch in here. There's not a lot that wants to deal with this. And it turns out they're actually going to flip turn. So the the Dragon Terra kind of helps me out in that sense and that I'm able to live it. So then they're allowed to switch into whatever they like. And then I can, you know, either let Excadrill go down or decide a better matchup. Now, as they bring in the Corviknight, I realized that Entei actually switches in pretty easily to this thing. I figure they're probably going to set up a Stealth Rock here um, or go for something like a Body Press. Turns out they're actually just going to Brave Bird, which, you know, I'm a pretty thick doggo. It doesn't hurt that bad. And that's the type of damage that I don't really care about giving up here. So, I can now go for, yet again, another big Sacred Fire. Again, I mean, they have options to switch into this, but slowly crippling the team is one way that I'm going to at least try to fight this uphill battle of these defensive boys. So, they're going to switch into the Hydrapple here. Sacred Fire does its thing, does a whole bunch of damage with a critical hit. Uh, doesn't get the burn, which doesn't necessarily really matter, but what does matter is now this next Sacred Fire is in a position to kill here. And I know that they're likely going to switch this thing out because... That's what this damn apple does. He just regenerates and comes back in healthier, and it's a damn problem. So, they're basically forced to switch into the one thing that can deal with Entei. Sacred Fire, which is the Basque Legion, and check it out. This is why we click Sacred Fire. This is a button-mashing A simulator, and Sacred Fire does exactly what you want it to. We get the burn there, which is great. That's the exact kind of fellow we want to be burnt. And now with Basque Legion crippled like that, we're actually... It opens the game up quite a bit for me. So... Again, I know that I'm not going to be able to grab a kill with the Sacred Fire here, and I don't need to take any unnecessary damage, so I'm going to switch right back into Excadrill once again as a Death Fodder. I'm like, if you just go ahead and die here, that'll be fine. As they go for the Aqua Jet, I actually end up living with 3 HP, which ends up being kind of unfair. I would, would have preferred that killed me there, I'm not even going to lie, because at this point, now they're basically free to switch right back into the Corviknight against the Excadrill, and then I kind of am in, in, in like a similar position. So I decided to switch things up. I'm like, you know who should come in here? Raichu. Thinking either maybe they go into the core of a night. If they don't, you know, Raichu has a good matchup versus the Basque Legion. And they actually just stay in and Aqua Jet there, which is fine. So the bad news is in what I should have been thinking about a few turns ahead is that Hydrapple is kind of free as a switch in here. Now I consider going for a nasty plot, um, but I realize I'm still just not going to get enough damage against that thing. So I decided to just go for a Thunder. It's going to do some chip, run the risk of also getting a para. It, it doesn't do anything, and I don't get the para. So Raichu, uh, probably not the move there. I couldn't really freely switch into Entei, because again, I didn't really want to take any... Um, even Burnt Aqua Jet damage still does a little bit, so I realize that it's fine, because I'm still in a spot here now where I'm actually just able to finally use Excadrill as a damn Death Fodder switch in, which will then give me the initiative to bring in whatever I like, versus the Hydrapple, which you already know my main goal is just bring in Entei and just mash Sacred Fire because nothing switches. So, uh, they go for the Fickle Beam, just going to be the regular single-headed one, and that, hope, thank God, is enough to kill uh, with that 3 HP. So, Excadrill is going to go down, and so now I'm able to bring in basically whatever I like here. Now, looking at what I have left, I realize that uh, Tornadus actually isn't a bad switch in here just because this thing can't really touch me unless it gets like the big Fickle Beam, but also I really do threaten it with things like a Hurricane. And I know they probably don't want that thing to take unnecessary damage. Is that a spot? You're getting close to it after a switch that it can take maybe two Sacred Fires. So I decide, expecting them to switch here, I'm going to end up going for a U-turn and see what type of uh, what type of little matchup we can we can get here. I, I feel like they probably go Corviknight here and then I have a nice little switch back into Entei. But it turns out they're actually going to bring in the Galarian Slow King. Regenerating Fella, number two. And this thing is also quite bulky. So I get the U-turn, which is great which then allows me uh, basically a nice little, little switch into uh, the Entei here. So 
Uh, the good thing is I'm still healthy enough to where I know that I can at least take one attack from this thing. A choice banded sacred fire, depending on how this thing is built, probably doesn't grab a kill here. Uh, but what it does do is just a whole dick load of damage. Basically, that's the moral of the story here. I'm able to go for that sacred fire. They do not switch, and it just barely lives. It lives on like 20 HP. Allows it to then go for a slack off, which is actually fine because uh, it is still now in a position where Sacred Fire does kill. Unless they want to switch and get that regenerator, which they're actually going to go ahead and do that because that's what this guy, Buddy is regenerating out here. If you thought that his guys were losing health, nope, you're coming right back in healthier than ever. Just like this <laughs> damn Hydrapple comes in nearly at full health. So I do go for the Sacred Fire. It is going to do around 50%, which is great. And I also get that burn, which is actually really nice in situations like this just because... Now, even after leftover, it's still looking like I am in a spot to, after this burn dam damage where I, I grab a kill here, which is great because boy would I love to see this golden ass apple dead. As much as I love this Mon, things freaking annoying. So I go for another sacred fire here and you guessed it, he's going to switch again, which I really wish at this point they didn't get that damn rapid spin off because the you know, stealth rock chip wouldn't be super meaningful, but it would still be kind of nice. So I go for that sacred fire, brings in the slow king. Now, it is able to live. At this point, I have two Sacred Fires left. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going for it. There's no way they switch here. Something has to feel the wrath of the Entei. There's just no way around it. They do let the Glarian Slow King go down. And Entei is continuing the Monumental Terror. So, now they're able to bring in the Revenge Switch of the Basque Legion. I cannot go for a Sacred Fire, nor do I want to. I only have one PP left of that. I would love to save it for something like that uh, Corviknight in the back. Or even just another hit on the Hydrapple. So... I decide to switch, and I'm actually go ahead and bring in Dredna. So, at this point in the match, we've gotten a considerable chip on everything, and I'm really feeling like one way I can at least try to bring this match home is to get some offensive sweep going. One way I can do it is Dredna. This thing is basically looking at, you know, a burnt freaking Basque Legion. I should be able to take one attack from this thing. So, I'm, I'm going to go for that Shell Smash, and uh, considering the burn, I'm like, even in last respects, do I, I think I live one here, especially... Considering the fact I have the white herb, so I don't have that defensive drop. And after a shell smash, I'm going to be doing a whole lot to everything. Even a stone edge to the Corviknight is going to do enough chip to where anything can pick it off. Now, as they go for that last respect, it knocks me down to 11. That, that move is insane. It hurts extremely bad even through the burn. And now, the sad news is, <laughs> they have the priority with the Aqua Jet. And so, it down goes freaking Dreadnought. Now, I lose the Dreadnought, which isn't a huge blow to the squad, because basically that was kind of a... A situation where I have a huge payout if it does work out with that Dreadnought. If I, if I lose it again, it's fine. I, I really it didn't have a huge role in the match, but it was worth the try to go for that Shell Smash. That's at least how I see it here. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring in the Tornadus, and I'm starting to realize I'm thinking, hold on a second. Tornadus actually kind of has this match in a really good spot as long as I don't take too much chip you know, versus Corviknight here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and click the Hurricane because I realize I'm not af as afraid of that Basque Legion as I freaking should be. So I really would love that thing to die. So as I go for the Hurricane, they bring in the Corviknight, which is generally a matchup that isn't great for the Tornadoes, but as I realize, I can actually go for a Rain Dance here, and that will give me a nice little hard-hitting rain-boosted Weather Ball, which should be a nice little 2-hit KO on the Corviknight, and, and then Stonks. So, they go for the Roost here. Now, one bad news about going for Rain Dance is it does obviously weaken the, the Sacred Fire, but at this point, I'm all in on the Tornadoes. I feel like I have the Wind Con here. They're down to three Mons left. I can then go for that Weather Ball, just throw a nice a bunch of orbs at him, and uh, it's looking like a two-hit KO, especially after the Brave Bird chip, because as that is going to do around 50 to me, uh, this next Weather Ball is going to kill, and they're kind of, again, back against the wall to where they don't have a good answer to this, uh, because the Hydrapple does not enjoy, especially 100% accurate Hurricane. So, one more Weather Ball is going to take care of the Corviknight, and now as they're able to bring back in Granny Smith, who's looking way healthier than you'd freaking imagine this Apple would be, but he should be bruised as hell out here. But uh, I can then just go for that accurate hurricane. And uh, that is going to be enough to take care of it. So not a salt vested hydrapple does not enjoy uh, the, the, free, the power of the hurricane. And now final mon is going to be the Basque Legion. Who does now have a boosted aqua jet in the rain. But he is in fact still burnt. So I'm like I should probably be able to live it. And uh, as they do go for that priority. I actually do live it with 26. Which uh, that burn once again coming in clutch as hell from the Entei. And a Hurricane is going to finish off the Basque Legion. So the Tornadus comes in, sweeps up the rest of the match. And I thought that was a really good one. Also a really fun game. Uh, Entei putting a lot of pressure on switch-ins. Especially on a team like that, it's pretty tough. So that is going to do it for game number one. And that is now going to bring us into the next match. Because you know how we do it around here. I will also say at this point, if you've made it this far into the video... 
Go ahead and hit that like button for me. It really does help out the channel. YouTube likes when you hit that button. I don't know. If you haven't already, just click it. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the game. All right, so this time my dude is gonna go ahead and lead off with everybody's favorite flower necklace. The Comfey is fine, because I lead off with the Fortress. Now, generally, I have the Gyro Ball on my Fortress. This time, I actually have spikes over that slot. And as they go for the turn one Combine, I'm really wishing I had the Gyro Ball, because the Buddy is setting up in the face of a Steel type with the Combine turn one, and I should be able to punish that, but I actually cannot. So, <laughs> I set up my Stealth Rock, which is fine. That's what the freak, it, uh, my Okama Game Sphere over here does. He, is round and sets up stuff. So I now just go for the Volt Switch thinking this is actually fine because as they set up another Comp Mind, I, Comfey relies on the strategy of its triage ability allowing its priority uh, in, in the form of healing moves. So most of the time it's basically just draining kiss or things like Giga Drain that are al allowed to go first. So as it has two Comp Minds, I should probably try to nip this fella in the bud before it gets too crazy. So I decided I'm actually gonna go right into the Excadrill here who can take a draining kiss all day. And then obviously just threaten the hell out of it with a, a, little, a little iron head action. So, uh, I do float in the air with my air balloon, which is obviously nice. I, I like to picture Excadrill just chilling in like six feet in the air with a balloon tied to his little arm. And he's just having, having a little birthday party fun. So, I go for the iron head here because this thing is starting to get a little bit scary. But they decide that they probably shouldn't have set up turn one and they're actually going to switch right into another freaking Hydrapple. This guy's red and boy do we have to deal with another Hydrapple. So... As I get that Iron Head off, it actually does a decent bit, um, but it does not enjoy taking physical attacks nearly as much. And as I have a decision to make here, I decide I'm going to go for a Sword Stance. I'm thinking, you know, Excadrill might be able to get a little something going here, you know, depending on what this thing's working with. It cannot go for that Earth Power because, of course, I do have that Air Balloon. But actually, they bust out the Syrup Bomb, which covers me in Sticky Candy Syrup, which... He's get, I know I'm a sticky iPad kid, and that is a, the worst kind of sensory feeling. So, uh, I'm now slow, but also I think I'm still faster than the Hydrapple. I can outspeed, and an Iron Head does just take care of the Hydrapple, which is actually pretty solid. So, don't have to deal with that asshole for too much today. And uh, we are still at plus two. I am slow, but, I mean, it is what it is. So, now as they go into the Haunch Crow, I don't really want to... I, I probably get outsped at minus one speed. So I realized I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to save the Excadrill because it's actually my best check to things like the Comfey. So I'm going to switch out and I decide to bring in Tornadus. That's mostly just because I know that I can take any attack from the fella. And I'm here to set up Rain Dance to, you know, potentially enable Dreadnought. But also gives me access to Weather Ball. And I, Weather Ball is still just really good by itself and nobody expects it. So they're actually going to switch out the Hunchcore as they went for an Endure. Which tells me they're trying to activate a Berry action. I'm like, that is not gonna be happening here so <laughs> they bring in the Don fan uh, who does take stealth rock chip which is important to note because now it does not have its sturdy uh, active so as I set up the rain that is gonna stick around with the damp rock and then I can fire off a nice little weather ball which is exactly the reason why we carry the damn weather ball here that just obliterates the Don fan who probably did not expect to be hitting the trunk by balls today but hey it's it's getting the it's get hit in the trunk by Balls Tuesday, and so now they go in. They go back into friggin' Honchcrow. Now I know Sucker Punch is probably this thing's best bet. I'm probably gonna go for an Endure again. I kind of don't really know exactly what it wants to do with that or what Buddy's cooking. So I'm gonna go for the U-turn, thinking it probably won't knock it down to range. And as they go for that Endure, it does still just bring it right back down to the Berry range, which is sad. So it does get a Salic Berry, which is gonna boost its speed. And now we're working with a fast Honchcrow, which um, is not something you see every day. And I'm like, hmm, that's kind of scary unless I have a, a freaking big dog that has extreme speed and that's exactly what we're working with so one fun thing about this match is actually it's a completely different game for Entei I'm able to go for that extreme speed with the choice band it definitely takes care of the haunch crow so we don't have to worry about that thing being fast because I am extremely fast in an extreme fashion so that is actually really nice here now extreme speed I am locked into as they go into uh, the freaking Galarian Slowbro this time, he's got a freaking gun, and I am frightened, but I'm actually going to go ahead and bust out the Terra Normal here. That's not only going to boost my extreme speed, but it's going to make it so if they do bust out any crazy water shenanigans, boosted in rain, I don't have to really worry about it. So I put the diamond on my head, doing my best uh, Dragonite impression here. I can go for that boosted extreme speed, and I figure it's probably like a two-hit KO here, and that's exactly what it's working with, which is great, because this thing is defensive. And Galarian Slowbro, he's got some tricks up his freaking shell sleeve over here, because check it out, he goes for the curse. Now the reason why people run uh, curse on Amon like this is because you get the benefit from the attack boost and the defense boost, but 
Then you also have the uh, action for not having to worry about speed because you have that shell sidearm ability, which just is a built-in quick claw. So I go for another extreme speed, and even at plus one defense, I actually take care of it. So Entei is just extreme speed and all over the place, and that is super solid. So um, as they now bring in the Kumfe, I'm like, okay, this thing, it, it's an interesting kind of dynamic here because as I go for an extreme speed, it is able to just barely live. I was kind of thinking maybe that would actually kill, but it does not, which kind of sucks, which then allows them to go for a calm mind. And as I'm thinking about it now, I'm like, shit, that's actually bad news because uh, it actually has a higher priority bracket now with its um, draining kiss, which shouldn't be able to do too much damage. And then so I'm like, that's actually fine. I can just kill it with another extreme speed. And once again, we're just mashing A out here. So that would be all good and well. But unfortunately for me, they actually are going to bust out a defensive Terra here with very little HP, kind of a big brain move because they go for that Terra Steel, which is going to basically make it so now they go first with their Draining Kiss, which, you know, does a little bit of damage, but most importantly, is going to give them health back before they get hit with my Extreme Speed. And the thing actually gets a shit ton of HP back, so now Extreme Speed is not going to be in a position to kill, and uh, it's at least, I, I think it's actually close. So here's the thing. Rain goes away, first of all, it doesn't really matter, but also it has leftovers, and then I'm like, I'm going to get Draining Kissed again, and then if my Extreme Speed doesn't kill there... I'm just in an endless fight and letting Entei take just unnecessary chips. So I decide instead of that nonsense, I'm actually just going to switch right into the Excadrill here because a Draining Kiss doesn't really do anything to me. And then I probably die to a Giga Drain, but I mean, then I can just bring in whatever I want. So uh, as long, if I can bring back an Entei for a Sacred Fire, that's kind of the goal here. So the Draining Kiss happens, does get some health back, which this thing just always stays alive longer than you freaking want it to. Um, I guess talking about both of them, mainly the Kumfe, but also the Excadrill. This thing never dies either. So uh, I am just going to go right for the Earthquake here and kind of expect to just go down. But they're actually going to switch. So they do not have the Hydra Apple to switch in here. But what they do have is a fella floating above the damn ground. And that's Yan Mega. So Yen, it does take the Stealth Rock damage, which means it's not Heavy Duty Boots, which probably means it's one of them Throat Spray Bug Buzz types of guys. And that thing is kind of scary. So I decide I'm actually just going to save Excadrill. Once again, it's my answer to that Kumfe. They didn't reveal the Giga Drain, so they probably don't have the coverage. And that's my easiest way around it. So as I switch into Entei here, I imagine they probably protect, which is exactly what they're going to do. So I have the free switch in, which is great. Uh, it does get that speed boost, but at this point, I don't care about how damn fast they are. I can go for an extreme speed, but I try to make a big brain play. I'm thinking they know I'm going to extreme speed here. So instead, I'm going to Sacred Fire expecting the Kumfe back in. I'm talking big brain out here, but they actually, they don't. They go for the Bug Buzz, which does activate the Throat Spray, and nothing like a little Throat Spray right before you die. So I do at least grab the Knockout with the Sacred Fire there, and now Yan Mega is, would have been a pretty scary threat if I wasn't able to bring back an Entei in Extreme Speed, but uh, now they can just go right back into Kumfe, their final Mon here. And I, obviously, I'm just going to leave this thing in. I can let it go down to the draining kiss here. It doesn't necessarily matter. But that is why we were saving our fella Excadrill in the back. Uh, because I have just uh, the easy matchup here. So, Entei goes down. But, again, completely different game from the guy. The extreme speed coming in clutch this time. With that Terra normal boost, extreme speed is, is quite scary from basically anything. But Entei uses it well. And uh, priority is nice. So I have a couple options here, and I'm just going to go right into Drillbert because, listen, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Drillbert comes in, and I'm like, go ahead and smooch me, bro. I'm looking extra smoochable today. You can Draining Kiss me if you'd like. I can then just Earthquake. They do just go for that Draining Kiss. It does not have uh, any other coverage here. And then as they steal a little bit of health, guess what? An Earthquake is just going to finish it off. So that is going to be the end of the game. I had a bunch of fun with these ones. This team has some really cool stuff it can work with and uh, yeah, had a good time with it. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you did enjoy, once again, please hit that like button. And also, if you made it this far into the video, go ahead and comment spaghetti so that people are like, why is everybody in the comments saying spaghetti? Unless, I guess, unless nobody actually watches this to the end and there won't be anybody that commented it and then I'll just look dumb. Then I'll be my secret. All right, see ya.